Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're going to be doing another Final Cut Pro tutorial. And today we're going to be doing the vertigo effect. The vertigo effect is where your subject stays the same size, but your background gets larger or smaller depending on which way you do the effect. And it's a cool effect because it can be done in camera, but it can also be done in post after you've gotten the shot. So the type of shots that I'm going to be using are pretty much primarily going to be drone shots but this would work the exact same way if you were using a gimbal or a dolly or something like that, you could achieve the exact same effect. All right, so the first and probably the most basic type of shot that you can do this effect with is just a straight shot. Going towards your subject or coming away from it is probably the most basic type of clip that you can use for this effect, but you can also use a clip that spins. So where you still have a subject in the frame, but the clip isn't necessarily going forward or backwards, it's just rotating around that subject. So let's just jump into the editing process and I'll show you how to make these. So obviously your first step is just gonna be opening Final Cut Pro, and we're gonna go ahead and create um, just a whole new library. Um, you may already have an existing library, but for this case, I'm just gonna create a new one. Um, and I'm gonna call this Vertigo. Um, so once your new library is created, you can go ahead and create a new project. Um, I'm just gonna leave all my settings like this, just a straight 1080p, um, but we'll rename it to Vertigo Effect. And then I already have some clips that I wanna use, uh, some of the ones that I just showed you. So we're gonna go up here to File, Import, uh, and Media. Boom. So once you find the clips that you're gonna be using, uh, just go ahead and import them. All right, so I have five clips here, and this is a super fast process, so I'm gonna show you how to do it on a few of these different clips, but we're gonna start out with this first one. So just drag that to your timeline, and then from here, cut it to where you want your clip to start, and then where you want your clip to end. So, I want my clip to start about right here. So I'm just gonna do Command B or Command Blade um, and that's gonna blade the clip so that I could select the portion that I don't want. Um, and then where I want it to end is probably maybe like right here. Well, we might change this eventually, but uh, for now, uh, this is gonna be our clip. And from here, what you're gonna wanna do is you're, want, is you're going to want to select the very beginning of your clip. So in this case, I'm gonna push the top arrow and that's gonna bring me to the beginning of my clip. From here, you're gonna to want to go to this little square box, which is the transform button. You're gonna to wanna to select that and then you're gonna see this little dot up here and all you're gonna do is just click on that and all that does is add a keyframe. So once you have a keyframe added, now all we're gonna do is basically you're basically gonna stretch the clip and that's what gives off this effect. So in order to do that, we're gonna go up here to where it says the percentage of what the clip that's showing. Um, so right now I have it set to fit. So the clip takes up the entire screen and we're just gonna go to 50%. And now I have some room to work with. And all we're gonna do now is we're gonna push the down arrow to bring us to the end of the clip. And then in order to select a portion of the clip that you want to transform again, you're gonna push the left arrow and that's gonna allow you to now select a part of the clip. And now we can add a keyframe to that section of the clip. So we're gonna click that keyframe button again and all we're gonna do is just drag our clip and increase the scale and that is all you do. Um, so we're gonna wait for this to render and then I will play the full thing for you and you can see um, the effect that we just created. And so as you can see, it basically stretches the, the background of the clip and our subject, me, this person standing on the rock, that doesn't get scaled as much as the background does. So from here, I'm gonna move on to a spinning clip and you'll definitely be able to tell the difference in that example. All right, so we're just gonna clear this screen. So just delete it. Normally I would save it and I'll show you how to do that towards the end of the video, but we're just gonna go ahead and get our next clip in. So same thing, 
just gra grab your clip and drag it to the timeline and then find where you want it to start and where you want it to end again. So I want my clip to start right here. Again, I'm just doing command B and then about right here, right before it pans down. And then we're just gonna do the exact same thing. So click the up on the arrow key to get to the start. You gotta click on your clip, select it, go to the transform button, add your keyframe, push down on the arrow keys, and then to the left on your arrow keys, add one more keyframe, go over here to the scale. Again, we're gonna select 50%, and we're just going to make it bigger. This time, I'm gonna drag it up because I wanna keep these mountains in the frame during the entire clip. And one way to do that is just to, at the end, wherever your last keyframe is, uh, just slide it up a little bit. So again, we'll do the same thing. I'm gonna wait for this to render, and then I'll show you it in its entirety. And my computer is screaming right now. You probably can hear it, um, but for some reason it can't handle doing stuff like this, so. All right, so it's rendered. Uh, we're gonna deselect the transform tool. Again, we're gonna go up here to fit, close that, and we'll just hit play. And so as you can see, this clip is a lot more drastic than the other ones. And that's because I cropped in so much. If you want to do this effect as drastic as this, just keep in mind the more you crop in, the worse the quality is gonna get. But if this is an effect that you're just doing for a video and the clip doesn't last too long and it's not very noticeable, you just want kind of to change the pace or something like that, this is something that you definitely can do. Most people who aren't in the filmmaking world or the editing world, they don't really notice stuff like that. So I wouldn't worry about it too much because it does create a pretty cool effect. So another cool thing about this effect is you don't only have to use it when there's a person in frame and you can play around with these all you want. Um, there's no wrong way to do it. And with it only being two keyframes and such a simple and fast process, uh, there's no reason not to try it and just add it to one of your videos. But if you guys do actually end up putting this effect in one of your videos and I was the one who helped you get there, um, I'd love to see that video. So leave a link in the comments and I'll definitely go check it out. If you've never tried it, you should definitely give it a shot. And if you do enjoy this type of content, leave a thumbs up. Uh, it just lets me know to keep making videos like this. So with that said, I will see you guys in the next video. Later.